Repeating patterns are super fun to create, they're super easy to create, and they really do have endless uses. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna give you a method for creating these in Canva, even creating the artwork in Canva. So let's jump in and check it out. So here we are on the Canva home screen. Now, if you had custom artwork that you were gonna use for your uh, repeating pattern, then you could go ahead and create a custom size here, square tile that was gonna be your base tile and get started. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create uh, uh, artwork here using Canva's AI tool. So if you don't have your own custom artwork and you wanted to generate some for you, you can come in here under Canva AI and then we're gonna to go to this image tab. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build out a prompt that's gonna let us create some elements that sort of fit a theme that are gonna be good elements for a repeating background. And I'll show you some tricks I use so I generate multiple elements at one time and also so that each individual element is easy to extract from the background and bring over into my other design where I'm actually gonna create that base tile because there are a few things to keep in mind as you do this. Now, there are some preset styles you can use here under this uh, preset style dropdown if any of these make sense for the look you're going for or you can upload your own image and use it as a style reference. But I tend to build style keywords into my prompt here so I tend to not use this and I tend to not use this, but whatever works for you, either method is fine. So I already ran the prompts I needed to generate some art options for my repeating background. So let me just scroll down and show you and walk you through some of the iterations just so you can understand my process. So I began with a very simple prompt, a few visual separated Christmas inspired elements with Christmas color scheme against a white background illustrated feel. So a few things of note here. Obviously you wanna tell it what theme you're going for. So for me, I'm going for a Christmas uh, inspired theme, but you could pick whatever theme you want your repeating background to represent. And then I am telling it, I want it to be visually separated and I want it to be on a white background because I want elements that I can easily extract later to bring into my tile where I'm gonna actually create that repeating tile to use for my uh, background. I also did ask for a few elements since I'm trying to get it to create sort of multiple elements at one time. It is gonna give you four different copies here. So if you wanted to just have one element on each page, maybe if you needed something at a higher resolution, maybe you would do it that way. But since I know all the individual elements are gonna be pretty small in my repeating background, I'm not concerned about having multiple images on one page here. I think it's still gonna work out fine. So I got some different results here. Uh, and so I can click in and see any of these and open any of these if I wanna see uh, them larger. Some of these are looking pretty promising. Other ones here I don't like so much. So first thing you can do is run the exact same prompt again. So that's what I did here. I just ran the exact same prompt again, uh, got some different results. This one here especially looks like it has some pretty promising things that might look good as part of a repeating background. It even sort of gave us a repeating background here. So of course you could ask for a repeating background and try to get it to do all the work for you, but it's more fun and sometimes can lead to a lot better results if you create something custom yourself. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking for individual elements that I'm gonna build into my repeating pattern. I also wanted some more text elements. I got a few here, but then so specifically up here, I'm asking it for Christmas inspired text elements. So now I'm getting potentially some text elements I can use in my design. Then with this next iteration, I came up here and I started sort of honing in more on the style I wanted. So here I'm asking for flat icon inspired elements. So I'm talking about a particular art style, style a particular graphic style. And this is giving me more and more of what I want. I like these elements a lot. I think this sort of flat icon style is gonna look really good as part of a repeating pattern. So now I think I'm really starting to get to the types of elements I want for my repeating pattern. And I just ran this a few more times and I got some more results that I like. And so I think this leaves me in pretty good shape with lots of elements to work with. Now I can pick out the ones I really like in the ones that I think are gonna work well in my repeating pattern and actually start to build out that base tile. So what is the process we're gonna use to sort of extract those elements we want for our base design? Well, that's where I wanna use this magic grab tool here in Canva. Now, if you use this click option, it'll try to find stuff automatically, but you can also just brush over elements. And this is why I created things visually separated and on a white background, because if I brush over this Merry Christmas now, and then I come up here and click this grab option, it's gonna automatically go in there. And because this is on a white background, it can very easily go in there and then it can extract that element. And now I have that element separated on its own layer. So I can go ahead and copy it. And now we're gonna go ahead back to the Canva home screen. And here's now where I'm gonna go ahead and create that base tile. So we're gonna choose custom size. 
I'm going to type in a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Again, if you needed something bigger, you could do something bigger. It all depends on the resolution you need and the resolution of those elements you're working with. So once I have this here, I can paste in that element I just have, I just copied using that magic grab. And now I have my first element of my base tile. So I can also come in here and give a background color if I want my whole pattern to have a background color. I'm not sure if I like this. I may end up changing this back to white, but of course you can fool around. And this is something also you can do later in the process. Uh, but for now, I'm just fooling around, experimenting a little bit, getting a feel for how things look. So you're sort of positioning and sizing things the way you want to. And then of course, once you have that, you can go get the next element for your design. So you're gonna make your way back to that Canva AI screen under the image tab, and you're gonna look at those images you've created. Of course, you can generate more if you want to. Now, when you click on something and you have an element you might want, you also have an option here on the lower left. If you decide, hey, I wanna boost the resolution. So you can take artwork that you've already created here, use this boost resolution if you wanna make it sort of even better in case you think you're going to need that extra resolution in your design. Again, I probably don't, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just to be safe. It's going to build that out here. And then once we have that, we're going to click on this again. We're going to click this edit to open it up. And once again, we're using that magic grab trick. So we can look in here, we can find elements we want to grab and bring over to our design. So I'll actually bring the whole thing, copy and paste it into my square base tile here. But now I'm going to come in here. And again, once again, I'm going to use that magic grab tool. So first, I don't like this background color. Let's just switch it to white. I think that is going to look better. But now I'll come in here under this element here, and I'm going to figure out which of these elements I potentially want to bring into my design. So again, we'll go under the edit button here with that selected. I'm going to find this magic grab. And once again, we'll be able to go find different elements. Now in this instance, I think the click just clicking, uh, it's going to find some things automatically and that's going to work. So I'm going to grab a few elements here. Let's try this present. Let's bring that over into our design. And then we might as well go ahead and grab a few more of these elements that we might want to use. So once again, coming back to magic grab and finding different elements. So you can see how this is sort of a repeat process of going back and forth and pulling in these individual elements using Magic Grab. Now, of course, if you were using your own custom artwork, you would just be using that file upload tab, uploading things, and then again, bringing them into that base tile and sort of repositioning and reorganizing as you start to build out your pattern. I will speed things up here so you don't have to watch me bring in each individual element. There's no one right way or wrong way to do this, but as I bring over elements, I try to start to position things. And again, no right way or wrong way, but I'm trying to think about things like visual balance. So having sort of even amount of white space between elements. I'm also playing around with rotation. I'm trying to make sure that the weight of objects on one side of design sort of matches on the other side of design. So it's basically you're looking for something that feels good. Now, right now I am just positioning things within the frame. We are gonna have to start thinking about positioning things you know that cut through the edge of the frame and we'll talk about that and how to handle that in terms of the repeating pattern but right now I'm just sort of duplicating some elements uh, changing the color of some of those duplicate elements so again you can take elements you can copy them you can paste them you can change the color uh, that's another nice thing about uh, creating elements like this you can very easily here in Canva go in here and change the color so I can come in here and change this tree give it a slightly different green things like that so you can just start to move things around the design get a feel for something that's going to look good now creating base tiles like this is a bit of an art form in terms of thinking about how they're going to look when it's a repeating pattern but that's just something that takes a little practice and you'll start to get a feel for what's going to look good so i'm just continuing to move things around playing with orientation spacing but then at some point in time we're going to have to be brave and we're going to have to take something and place it partly out of the frame so partly over the edge of our document here now when we do this how are we going to ensure that we then get it to match up when we tile this pattern because we're just working on a base tile and the whole idea is here that we're going to be able to add this tile in any direction the sides are going to match up and so we're going to build be able to build out this seamless repeating pattern and make it as large as we want so what we're going to do is anytime we have an element that crosses the edge of our design like this we're going to make a duplicate of that now we can do that by right clicking and choosing duplicate or we can hit Control c to copy and then Control v to paste a new copy and then we're going to come in under the position tab under a range and we're going to use these x and y coordinates to perfectly position the duplicate element so that it matches up with its mirror image counterpart on the other side of the design that way it's going to tile together seamlessly when we put two tiles together so how we're going to do this is going to have everything to do with the size of our canvas because the width and height of our canvas is going to represent how much we need to shift something up or down on the x or y axis and that's precisely why we started with a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels just to give us a real nice 
nice, easy round number to work with. So we're just gonna have to shift something up or down by a thousand pixels. So that's what I'm doing to ensure my tile tiles seamlessly together. So this 810, actually I need to subtract a thousand from this because we're going up on the Y axis. So it actually becomes a minus 2.10.6. And then we have a tree copy at the top of our screen exactly where we need it. So this is the process I'm just gonna repeat anytime I have an element that crosses over either the right or left edge of my design. So I'll just continue to move things around here uh, using that reposition trick whenever I have an edge element, make sure I bump it to the other side of the screen, a duplicate copy, so I get that seamless edge. And then at some point in time, you're gonna probably have some gaps in your design where maybe you want some smaller items. So you can again, uh, go back to that artwork you created, cut out some smaller items using that magic grab, and then we're gonna use those to sort of fill in some of the little gaps we have here. So we'll grab some, and we'll just start to fill in some of these little gaps. Again, it's going for an overall base tile that we're happy with that has good balance that's going to look good when tiled together as a seamless pattern. Now at one point in time while creating this pattern I did have a wreath in the upper left corner breaking both the left edge and the top edge. Had I decided to leave it there I would have needed to make duplicates for each corner of this design using that simple math we talked about just so when I tiled things together everything would match up seamlessly. But for simplicity's sake I decided just to nudge this down a little bit that way I would only need the one copy for the right side and when you're making copies like this again we started with a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels to do simple math but you could also just bring your calculator up on screen if you wanted a little help with the math so i can see the wreath has a position of minus 58.9 pixels so i could just add a thousand to that and that's going to give me the number i need for the new x position for that duplicate copy of that wreath then once i've made any other final little adjustments to this base tile I'm gonna to wanna to save this off because now I'm gonna to wanna to try it in a larger repeating pattern to see how it actually looks. So I'll give this a name, something like Christmas pattern base tile. And again, I'm calling it base tile because this is gonna be the basis for a larger repeating pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead now and after I've named it, I'm gonna come in here and save it off. So I will come up here under share and I'm gonna choose the download and I will download this as a PNG. Now, if I wanted to save it off with transparency, I could, and then I could try it on different background colors that way. I just have the background color baked into my base tile. So that's really up to you. So then we're gonna to navigate to where we want it on our computer. So I'll put it in this folder here. And now I have that saved off. And then in a lot of browsers, you're gonna see the recent downloads here in the upper right. So I can actually just drag it right in here under uploads. You could also go under the upload tab and then click the upload button, whatever works. But so now I have this base tile here in Canva. And so now I can try it in a larger design as a repeated pattern to see how it looks and see if it needs any farther adjustments. So now from the Canva home screen, I'm just gonna choose presentation to launch a new presentation. And then I'll come under my uploads tab and I'll grab that base tile that we just created and I'll bring it right in here. Now I can resize it down to have it be whatever size I want to be in here. But then I'm gonna to start to drag out duplicates uh, to start to build this repeating pattern. So I'm just holding it on the Alt key on Windows, that would be optional Mac, and I'm dragging out copies. And I'm just building this pattern across the screen. Now, if you wanna save some time, what you can do is once you have uh, several of them like this, like so I have a row of five, now I can come in here, click and drag to select them all, and then that same Alt click tr trick just to drag down another row and drag down another row. So now we have this repeating pattern and now I can really take a look at this and see whether it looks good. Because if you have any gaps you don't like, any other parts of this repeating pattern you don't like, you could still always go back to the base tile, make adjustments to affect the overall pattern. But I think this looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go with this. And then I tend to save this off. So this is my process. I create that base tile and then I come in here then create this larger pattern, usually larger than I think I'm gonna need. And sometimes I'll even upscale a little bit here on export just so I have this really large asset that I can bring back into Canva and then that's something else I can bring into new designs and scale down and size as I need on different Canva projects. So I'll just save this off in this folder and I'm gonna call this Christmas background pattern. And then once again, once I have this saved off, once again, I can go and bring that asset I just saved off back into Canva. So I'll go up here, I'll find it and I'm gonna bring it back here under my uploads tab. So now I have another new asset in the Canva and for new projects, I can bring it in like this and I can size it to however I need it for that given project. Of course, if you do find you need something even bigger, that's not a problem because just take that larger pattern you just created and now we're just gonna create something even bigger. Same process where all this is gonna match up. We're just dragging out rows and we're making an even bigger repeating pattern and all of it based off that one base tile. So the base tile we started with, that's really the key magic to all this. And then we can duplicate it as many times as we want to make whatever sort of larger pattern we want. 
And once again, you can download any new versions you have just so you can bring those back into Canva as assets you can continue to use. Background patterns like this can be a cool element on something like an animated slideshow. So something like this, very cool, but there really are endless uses. And of course you really get into fun when you start talking about using them on print products. So lots and lots of different things that could be the end product for this design. So you really, really have endless options. Hey, you might even use it as your Christmas wrapping paper. Now, of course, if your end goal is an actual physical product, a key step would be deciding exactly what that product is and where you can print it from. Now, Canva has lots of things that it can design and print. So I could come in here and I could search for marketing materials. Let's go down and this mailer box looks pretty cool. So if I clicked into this, it would bring up this design template. And that's where you can come in here, find your Christmas pattern, go ahead and click and bring it into your design. And then we can resize this again to whatever scale we want to see on our box. And hey, that would be a pretty cool mailer box if you were sending a Christmas item. So I like that quite a bit. Of course, you don't have to use Canva. I had mentioned before, it might be cool to do your own custom wrapping paper. So you could do a quick search to see for services that allow you to print that. So with a quick search, I found Vista Print has this option right here. And of course, if we click in on that and see details, they do have their own template. So you can just upload that file from Canva that you saved off and boom, very easily come in here, scale it. And this would be pretty cool to have your own custom wrapping paper. So lots and lots of options when you have cool repeating backgrounds like this, and you can create them very simply in Canva. And of course we were doing a holiday themed example with the holidays coming up, but this is a repeatable process and you can use Canva AI to create any sort of themed element you want. So, Hey, maybe I want to create a fantasy background because Hey, I can do whatever I want. So again, follow the process, create the background. It's super fun. It's super cool. And there are lots and lots of uses. So I hope you give this process a try and see what kind of results you can come up with. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. This simple method for creating repeating patterns in Canva can be really fun and they really do have endless uses. Now on this channel, I already talked once before about another method for creating seamless patterns in Canva when you want to create slightly more complicated backgrounds. Now I have a free guide for that seamless pattern method. So if you want to check that out, I will put that in the first pinned comment down below. And I'll also have a link in the description to that other video and up above. Thanks for watching. I hope you try out this method. Hope you have fun with it. I'll see you soon. Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented. Being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past.